Hello, happy Friday, July 19th. If you are new here, my name is Brianna from A Bubbly Classroom and I show a little bit of every day in second grade. As you can tell, I'm not at school, I'm at home and I am not going to school today, but I wanted to show you my planner because I ordered from Plum Planner, Plum Paper for the first time and I felt like I had a really hard time finding reviews of their current teacher planner and um, kind of had to go with just pictures online and the little clips online and on their Instagram. So I thought I would just put this out here in case someone else is thinking about using them just so you can see what it looks like. I literally have not even opened this. This is my first time seeing it with you. Oh my gosh. Ooh. All right, it says it's a beautiful day to make plans. How cute is that? A sample of their cover material. And here she is, y'all. Okay, let's get this stuff out of the way. All right, I have only ever ordered Erin Condren. I've bought um, just some generic planners at Target and whatnot, but this is the first time I've ordered from, from Plum Paper. And first thing I notice is the cover is very different from Erin Condren. Uh, it is beautiful, I'm obsessed with this, but I chose not to get the clear cover. I just wasn't sure what that was gonna look like. I just got their regular cover and you can see it's like way more bendy than the Erin Condren one. We'll see how it holds up. And then these are, I'll show you these in a little bit. Here's the front, front page, first page. Uh, to be honest, I really don't use these. Some people do, I do not. I also don't really use stuff like this, but there wasn't too much of that in this planner, which I liked. Okay, this is the big push for why I changed companies. I think Erin Condren is really dropping the ball on customization, especially with coloring. So uh, this company had, I think, three different color choices. They had this one, they had more of a full rainbow, and then they had a black and white version. Uh, my problem with Erin Condren ones is when you change this, it changes the whole layout of the planner, and I don't love their other layouts, and I actually am obsessed with this color scheme. So let's get into it. July, I will actually probably use a lot of this page for meetings that I go to in July. Um, but as far as like birthdays and events, no, no thanks. All right. This is the monthly spread. Okay, this was another big one for me of why I chose Plum Paper. I was able to customize this so much. I added lines to every box because I am type A. I like everything neat and organized and I loved that I could add lines. It looks a little busy right now, I think because I'm used to seeing blank boxes, but I think as I start putting stuff in and have lines to write on, I'm gonna actually really love this. You are also allowed to add whatever um, holidays you would like. So as a teacher, the moon cycle is important to me. <laughs> and then I was able to add some like US holidays, some um, different religious holidays that my kids usually celebrate. And you can literally check all or choose the ones that you want to include in your planner. I love that. All right, let's get into the weekly view. Another th reason I loved this, on Erin Condren, I, I can um, customize these, but I just loved the font here. Like I said, I love the colorway that they have going on. And I just feel like they took, made use of all of the space with this layout. So I did um, every subject. I'm not putting paper plans in here. That's not what this is for. For me, this is literally for, I'm going to put reading, whatever days we have graded assignments, I'm gonna put those in. I have phonics, math, science or social studies, writing, reminders, and an empty box down here. So every day I love to have a little checklist of things I wanna do. So reminders might be important things like a faculty meeting or something like that. And then this bottom box is going to be kind of my Monday 
things to get done box, my Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then you can put um, titles for these when you customize this over here. I chose not to because I didn't wanna be married to one specific, like this box is this for the whole year because truthfully, I usually try something and then it evolves and changes throughout the year. So I left these blank and I'll be able to put whatever label I want here for this little checklist and this little box. The other layouts had uh, these kind of spaces maybe down at the bottom or over here so that's kind of why i went with this layout i wanted monday through friday and then just some checklist stuff going on over here let's see you got one two three four weeks in july and then it goes into august over here on this page and then you do have a second july notes page so that's kind of nice not as much note space as the erin condren which i did love that um, but I do have one here that I can maybe use for faculty meetings and then one here that I can use like for a committee that I'm on. That's probably how I'll, I'll use it. And then August is the same. September. One thing I do wish they did, I wish when I turned October, I wish it was right to the month view. But that's just because I'm gonna end up flipping past this page every single time I wanna go look at the month. Um, we've got December, January, February, March, oh, lots going on in March, April, May, and then June. So that is everything for the month and week views. Let's go to the back and see. This tab is called My Class. Uh, this year's school goals, I probably won't use that. I'm just, who has the time? Um, I don't know about this. I, maybe I'll find a use for this. I usually do not find uses for pages like this because I feel like anything I'm going to put on this list for July, I would just go put on the July monthly spread. So we'll see about this. Uh, schedule, not going to use. Seating chart, no, not for me. Substitute for information, no. Field trips, probably not. Volunteer list, no. Student birthdays, no, that's on the wall. Classroom resources, mm, no. Classroom expenses, probably not, I'm lazy. This is what I was excited about. Um, our school encourages us to keep communication logs. So I actually added a ton of extra, you can add extras of these so that I can have, I think I have enough, maybe one page per student. If not, I thought I could just draw a line down the middle and have two students on a page. But this is for if you call, if I call home, email for something specific. Um, that way I kind of have a running record of conversations I have had with that family, positive or negative. And then I kind of have just a snapshot of that one student. That way when we have conferences or something else comes up, I can kind of look back at this and see everything we've talked about so far. Because it's just too hard to go back through all the emails for every student if you're trying to have a conference or, or talk about something with them. All right, so those are the parent communication pages I will use. Student contacts, no, all digital. Behavior log, no, absolutely not. Passwords and professional development, no thank you. All right, next year's goals, I won't use that. Checklist, this is the other one. This is kind of like old school. I know people are not really doing this much anymore, but I did um, add extras of these because I do use these. I love this for kids who return parent uh, field trip forms, kids who returned lunch order forms. Like I use these as little checklists, even for things that like I want to make sure every student like gets rewarded with during the year. Like um, we have a our media special. She has a makerspace, and two kids per day can go in there during your 
grade levels week and I want to make sure every student gets to go so like this is just a good place to keep all of those little checklists like that in one place and I also keep uh, paper grading I still do I've been burned by the digital before where it has updated and students have come off my roster and I've lost their grades and I just will not let that happen to me again so I do keep paper grade book dot pages it's great but no I'm not gonna use it contacts no more contacts more passwords no <laughs> and then 2026 this is kind of good to look at I guess if I'm looking into next year towards the end of this year like April May if I'm looking at the 25 26 year maybe I'll look at this I don't know and then you can add extra sticker pages. I actually didn't think I was gonna get any because I didn't choose sticker pages. So that's kind of nice that you still get some. I guess you could just add more, but I just really, as cute as these are, I end up ripping them out at the end of the year because I didn't use any and saving them. And what am I saving them for? I don't know. So I didn't add any. And then they have the nice pocket on the back, which the Erin Condren does too. Oh, two-sided pocket, love that. And then the back cover is the same as the front cover. That is the entire planner. I am going to let you know how I like it. And if I'm gonna keep using this, I feel like I am. I'm actually like really impressed going through it. The paper quality is excellent. I was unsure about that because no, I couldn't find any videos about that. And then you can customize the cover. I just loved the cover so much. I didn't even wanna mess with it. I thought it was so beautiful. <laughs> so I left it perfect and clean um, but yeah I'm really excited about this okay last thing I want to show you is I did order customized stickers I thought this was a really cool thing that they do and you can actually like make this whole like I made this whole side test but on this one I didn't need that many grades due so I made the rest conferences so my plan for these is I got two my plan is, this is not for like classroom tests. This is gonna be more for like diagnostic assessment, any standardized assessment, write score, I ready, anything like that. I'm gonna mark those days with these. Meetings, I'm going to, I'm not gonna mark PLCs because we do that every week, but I will mark like faculty meetings or if my committee is meeting, something like that. Grades do, we do nine week grades and four and a half week grades. Um, so the nine week grades are like the big ones, obviously four and a half is more like a progress report, but I'm going to put the sticker on those days that they're, the grades are due and then just write whether it's a nine week or on a four and a half week. And then for conferences, I'm going to put like, if on a Tuesday I have three conferences, I'm gonna put the sticker conferences and underneath I'll put the kids' names of whose conference I have on that day. So I ordered these with very specific uses in mind and I thought that was much more beneficial to me and a better use of my money than just buying the generic extra stickers that they offer. But I am super excited about this planner. I think this is going to be a really good one for me. Um, I customize this exactly to my needs. You can customize it however you want. Their custom customization is incredible. So um, yeah, I will let you know. I have never done one of those before, so if you like that, please let me know. Um, I just couldn't, like I said, could not find anything about Plum Paper, the new teacher planner. So I just thought someone else might be looking for this and it is here for you. So I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time in my classroom. Bye.